Hey, today I'm going to be talking about Jotunlib and how great it is for getting stuff into Valheim. To start, it's a mod on Nexus Mods, which I'll put this link in the description. But you'll just come here and download it with Vortex, uh, or you can do it manually from the files page. So uh, it lets you add a lot of stuff, um, prefabs, items, recipes, and uh, everything in this list here. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the first three here as an example today. So we're going to add a couple prefabs, uh, turn them into inventory items, and then create recipes for them. Um, and one note here is under requirements, it says you need this Bepinex pack. Uh, you don't need that. You can get by with just the uh, unstripped DLLs that you already have. Before we get into the actual code, I just want to show a quick prefab I've put together, uh, kind of as a proof of concept. This is just a copy of the Iron Sword, and then I've taken it and put a basic cube on the end of it, just for fun. So you can create a game object here. I just created the cube, stuck it on the end. Uh, you'll see that none of the other stuff here has really changed. I, I edited the name, but all the damage modifiers are the same, uh, the damages are the same, and this will come into play when we get into the actual Jotunlib code. So I have this, it's exported into a sword block asset bundle, and we'll be loading that into the game. If you don't know how to create these prefabs and get them into asset bundles, uh, you can look at my previous video on custom items. Uh, the code side of the custom items will be updated to use Jotunlib, and I'd honestly recommend switching over to Jotunlib, but the uh, creation of the assets and the prefab bundling will stay the same. Moving over to the code, I've added this new project, example Jotun, and I'll make all of this code publicly accessible. Uh, you can take it and use it for whatever you want to use it for. Uh, first thing, I've added a new shared project also alongside it. This is just a asset bundle helper. You can include this project and use it to load your asset bundle from your file. Just a matter of convenience. Other than that, the references you'll need are pretty much the same as the other mods that I've shown. So you'll need uh, Harmony, Assembly Valheim, uh, Bepinex, and then the, a few of the Unity modules. Uh, on top of that, though, you'll want to target your Jotunlib mod installation, which you can do just by going to Add Reference, Browse, going to your game installation. It's inside Bepinex plugins. It is this Jotunlib DLL here. After you have those references installed, just create a new mod that extends the base Unity plugin. You want to add this Bepin dependency, which will target the uh, Jotunlib mod GUID. This just uh, tries to enforce other users of your mod to make sure that they have the Jotunlib download. At its core, Jotunlib exposes a lot of event handlers that allow you to register your own methods. So here you'll see that we have the prefab register and the object register, which we're going to use to create a couple prefabs and then turn them into items and register a recipe for each one. To show kind of a couple approaches to do this, we're going to load in one item from our asset bundle and the other item we are going to create by using a copy of an existing in-game item. I'll start with the item loaded in, since it's most similar to the previous approach. To do that, you load your asset bundle from your attached resource, which is just this embedded sword block. You load the game object from the corresponding file path inside the asset bundle. And then finally, to demonstrate a little bit of the manipulation of using this approach, we're going to target the item drop and then just add a basic 20 fire damage to the sword. So in game, you should see the sword with a block stuck on the end, and then it should do a little bit of burning damage when you hit an enemy. Unfortunately, at the moment, the register prefab 
method, which you need to use inside Jotunlib, is marked as internal. In their dev branch, it's fixed as a public method. Uh, I, I just think they didn't expect people to use this approach as commonly, but it should be resolved soon. So for now, I'm just using access tools out of Harmony, which is a shortcut to reflection. And that allows us to use this register prefab method with our sword block and register it as a sword block prefab. The second approach is copying an existing prefab. There are a couple of ways to do this, but the way I found preferable is to create a new class that extends this prefab config, which is a Jotunlib concept. Inside this class, you just add a register method that copies an existing item based on this uh, extension. So here we're going to copy the iron armor chest piece and turn it into magic armor. Inside the register method, you have access to the prefab with this field here. This is from the extended prefab config and you can load the item drop component off of that prefab. After doing so, we'll edit a few basic things here, the name, description, and then turn the armor up to 999. To make it a little more interesting, I'm also going to show how to add an equipped status effect. There are a lot of options here. You can change stats around uh, and really do quite a few things to the character when they use different armors or even armor uh, sets. So you can add set bonuses or whatever you want really. For this one, we're going to make the armor value really high, but when you equip it, we're going to add a burning status effect that'll just do one fire damage over time. So you'll see in game, you'll take almost no damage from enemy attacks, but you'll slowly die. Just kind of a fun effect. The last thing we need to do is turn the prefabs into items and add recipes for them. That's super simple with Jotunlib. You just hook into the object register event handler, add a method, then add a few different pieces to it that do those few steps. So first we're going to register the sword block item, then the magic armor item, then we're going to add a couple basic recipes. It's going to take a deer hide to create the sword block and then just a piece of wood for the magic armor, but you can really put anything in here. This is a pretty fleshed out configuration. So that's really it. It's a lot less code, a lot simpler, and honestly a lot more powerful than the previous approaches. And now we're just going to load into game and I'll show you how it all works. So the first thing you'll see is Jotunlib getting initialized in the console. It'll load a little bit and then the rest will load when you actually go into your world. So if we go over to the game, load into any world, come back over to the console, you'll see it loaded your prefabs or items and then your recipes. And all of those should be available in game now. So to test it out, I'm going to enable dev commands. And first we'll spawn in the block sword. We can see that it has our prefab attached. We can pick it up, swing it around. Second thing we'll add in is the magic armor. Pick that up. To show these off, I'm going to turn on god mode, and then we'll spawn in a troll. So here's the troll. You can see that you can hit it, and it catches on fire. So now that you've seen that, I'm going to put on the magic armor. You see that you take almost no damage now, but over time you're taking one tick of damage every iteration. So pros and cons to it, but there's a lot of other fun effects I'm sure people can think of, but hopefully that's a basic guide and you can really start getting creative. The last thing I'll show is the crafting recipes. 
So if you go over to a workbench, you'll see that since we added the crafting recipes to the workbenches uh, list, you now have the block sword, which takes one deer hide, and the magic armor, which takes one piece of wood. Anyway, that's it for this video. I was sick last week, so it's a little bit shorter and unscripted. If you're alright with this format, I might stick with it. Otherwise, I'll try to go back to the more structured, uh, scripted out guides. Um, in addition, I want to add a follow-up to this one where I cover the rest of the functionality of Jotunlib. So I'll try to get that out uh, probably pretty soon. But if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments or reach out to me directly. Thanks for watching and have a good one.